Hola amigos, my name is host Eric, I'm the host of Talking with Famous People, the internet television program that informs, delights, and amuses non-stop with a trillion cans of pineapple. This video is called Too Big for My Britches and it can last no more than 20 minutes because I got an appointment in 22 minutes. Number one, skin marker correlation. Rachel and I were watching this show on Netflix yesterday about Skinwalker Ranch and weird stuff that goes on there. <coughs> One of the things that occurred in the video that frustrated me immensely was that, uh, where did I put my man? Oh. Was that, uh, was that they were constantly using the word correlation and nobody ever used it correctly, including the so-called scientist who was being sciencey, you know? Now, the scientist was not bad at science. He successfully triangulated a point by using three spots plus angle of orientation to determine a triangulated spot up in the air about a mile above the ranch. So, I was impressed by his successful application of trigonometry. But, look, I mean, I don't. I know I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to bust out the trig and triangulate a spot and figure out the angles and all that shit. No way. That would be a big pain in the ass. I, that's definitely the sort of thing you delegate, you know. But use the word correlation correctly. It's so it's so annoying just going through the world constantly, and everybody's always using every word wrong. But words like correlation are important to use well because they're making distinctions about accountability processes. That is to say, how we make determinations about linkages. So, a coincidence just means two things coincide. They exist, they, within a given frame of observation, they seem linked in time as you frame them. A perfect example of a coincidence is the fact that when Ra Rachel's smoking of DMT and the onset of her neuropathy symptoms and serotonin syndrome that happened right then, or right after, you know? So, that's a coincidence. If you say it's just a coincidence, you mean it's a coincidence in that they both they coincided in time, but there's no linkage between them. I'm not saying it's just a coincidence, though. I'm saying it is a coincidence because there, you can't establish a correlation in a thing like that because a correlation is checking to see the frequency of coincidence in multiple instances of, of the elements occurring with each other against what would be expected from random and if there's a substantially greater rate of coincidence than random, then you have a correlation. If you have it 100%, if you have it if and only if, so every time, every time it rains, there's lightning, and every time there's lightning, it rains, and there's never anything else, then that's a correlation of one. That's as strong a correlation as you can get. There's still no establishing of causality, because... There's a correlation of one between uh, eating food and being in prison. Everybody, well, no, there's not because it only goes one direction. But if you're if you're only measuring one direction of it, then there's a correlation of one. Uh, that it is the case that for every person in prison you look at, every single one of them ha it eats food. But there's no linkage there. So. These people are using correlation to mean every fucking thing imaginable. Causality is a conclusion that you draw for reasons beyond just correlation. And exactly where we establish that something is causally related, it's usually, um, it's usually we're really establishing a strong correlation or statistically significant correlation. Uh, and then we're just hoping we've we're not mistaking something for something else. An example of where 
the medical community, scientists, or whatever you want to say, mistook a uh, strong correlation for causality is in throat cancer. It used to be, say, on cigarette packs that it caused throat cancer because there's a very strong correlation between smoking. There used to be a strong correlation between smoking and throat cancer. It turned out, and it, but there was also an equivalently strong correlation between drinking and throat cancer. So it was sort of st- told to everybody that smoking causes throat cancer and drinking and smoking together increases the risk. In reality, it was oral sex that caused throat cancer. And it caused it by a, the um, that HPV. And um, what correlated, what actually was a strong correlation between oral sex and drinking and smoking was mistaken as a strong correlation between throat cancer and, I mean, it wasn't mistaken as, they, there was that strong correlation, but there was no causal link. So this is the sort of thing that happens when we don't use words right, is that people just, but, but fuckery ensues all over the place. All right, number two. I only have 15 minutes left. Well, that, that show, by the way, that Skin Flicks, Skin, Skinwalker Ranch show, uh, it's got a number of problems with it. <laughs> we watched all eight episodes of it, or more or less all, like seven episodes of it. The eighth episode's kind of like a recap. Um, and there's some weird stuff that you can point to, but, uh, it's just, throughout the whole thing, there's this committed clumsiness towards reasoning well. They kept pointing to the fact that they had dug on the ranch and then somebody, coincidentally, had gotten some kind of unexplainable injury. And continually predicating arguments on the fact that that in some way was a reason to avoid digging. Uh, one of my happy moments yesterday was <laughs> after like episode three of this, I said to uh, Rachel, I'm like, I should name this show Should I Dig a Hole? <laughs> like three episodes more discussing whether or not they should dig a hole. In general, the whole show has tried to build up a lot of suspense by having people discuss how dangerous what they're doing is. That's not a good way to make a show, to, to say, like, okay, we're going to make a show about us discussing whether we should make a show. Just dig a fucking hole already. All right, number two. We also watched, Rachel and I did yesterday, this psychedelics video that was on Netflix. It, it, four episodes, one on LSD, one on mushrooms, one on um, MDMA, and one on peyote. Each of the episodes is about that subject, you know. And it's the host of it. It's based on a book by an author named, I think his last name is like Paulin or Palin or something like that. Uh, but he uh, he was cool. He was interesting. The thing is, in watching through this this whole thing, first of all, it was, it's just, like I was saying, to start off this video, it's, everything is an assault of some sort on, on what I understand to be so. When I watch this, they're interviewing all these various people, getting all these people's perspectives, and all I can see the whole time is how each of them is projecting their intentional biases onto the matter and totalizing stuff in ways that are misleading no matter how universally true they may sound and how it's inevitable in like absolutely everything that that I deal with this constantly because nobody is talking from the right assumption. You know, if everybody's talking from the wrong assumption, which is that humans are best understood as individual examples of one thing, rather than humans are best understood as 
16 sets of individual examples of one thing. 16, 16 different things, you know. Uh, namely, 16 different configurations. And that... It, it starts from this. It's like, at no point has anybody who's saying anything in any of these videos, be they scientist, philosopher, or anything in between, layperson, medicine woman, whatever, at no point has any of them answered this question. In what units do we measure being? And the answer is, is time and slash or attention. Uh, in other words, what's the, what's the meat of being? It's attention. How do we measure it in time? If you've not answered that question, or thought about that question, or even had a hesitation about your clarity in the absence of having thought of that question, then everything you say is like somebody confidently telling me about this painting when they can only see this much of it. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating because it's like these people are all looking for and trying to attain clarity about existence and being and they're all guaranteed to fail. <laughs> Regardless, it made me emo watching this thing because it's, and I, it took me a second to realize why I was crying a lot when watching it. I've been correct about shit like the drug war and all that kind of stuff for decades, way ahead of anybody, uh, like this current renaissance of, of like, hey, maybe let's not be totally fucking nut job authoritarians about shit. <laughs> well, great, that's fantastic. And I, it's, it's so gratifying to see that what I was saying so long ago be validated by society kind of growing up a little bit, right? And yet, there's also this unavoidable sense that that all of those horribly wrong people who were advocating in favor of the drug war and put into place programs like D.A.R.E. that they're saying, you know what, we may have been wrong about that. Now, maybe we can help. No. You don't get to help or anything like that. Fuck off. You, what you need to do is realize, oh shit, I need to stop being certain about stuff that I've got no business being certain about. When it applies to public policy, I need to be responsible <laughs> with my epistemological minds. So I was in the car, we were driving back from the Wibbit store yesterday, and I was trying to explain all this to Rachel, like, because, you know, poor Rachel, she has to listen to my explain things all the time. I was explaining how frustrating it is to just even move through the world at all and watch anything that says anything because it's also it's like there if you once you see the whole painting then it's insanely annoying when people who are, can only see the teeny piece of the painting are stomping their feet and insisting that that's what the painting is and she said you're just too big for your britches <laughs> You're so right. In every sense of the word. It's like, what she was really grasping there is that where the world is in terms of mapping and understanding various things, justifying things, using reasoning to know or conclude things, understanding how language works and what words do and why using them meow way or meow way 
produces these kind of pitfalls of of knowledge, you might say, or pitfalls of understanding. That this the kind the size of pants that the world is in regarding that stuff. I'm much too big for it. <laughs> And it's uncomfortable to me to move through the world like this. And that might sound self-important, self-aggrandizing or whatever, but it's 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 much more I'm it's much more of me being a baby than that. It's like God I how how annoying that I'm at a place now in my life where I can't read or watch anything without seeing how whatever's being said is a partial, it stems from the wrong assumption of a correct understanding in the absence of that correct understanding. Dekomia. Boba Fett used that word yesterday in the live stream. It was like, these make good deco meows. I like the term. It means it's a decoration, but it could also be something else. You know, it's like something you have on your desk that you might play with sometimes, but that when you're not playing with it, it kind of serves a decorative purpose. Or just to remind you that it exists, I guess. It's a deco meow. And... A little under five minutes, or about five minutes. Well, in five minutes <laughs> is when it starts. But I'll probably leave in this video a little bit before five minutes. Um, I'm going to go work with Jeffrey on policy debate. I don't even know what the, the topic area is this year, but his partner is at camp, so I'm going to be reviewing their camp files and stuff. That should be nice. Uh, it's been a while since I've done any debate coaching, and... It's it's my hometown, you know. I like I like rolling around in its in its ways, in its terms, in its economies, etc. Lastly, BT three K. So Effie Polar is interesting. If it thinks it made an Effie mistake, it doesn't have good people with Effie Polar are gonna they have the absolute value of how they're perceived by others. But they're not good at sweeping at all. So it's like if if somebody with epipolar, especially ISTJ, makes a big social faux pas, then it's at least somewhat likely that instead of doing any reparative work, they're gonna roll in and uh, try to double down because they're assuming. They're damned forever. Effie doesn't work like that. Alright, <laughs> so... When this guy... BT3K... Made a social mistake at the end of the stream before... And I timed him out because it was... It was a kind of social mistake that if I don't time him out... It's going to be incorrectly understood by other people as me tolerating... Un a kind of disrespect I shouldn't tolerate. Even though it wasn't really an example of that per se, he didn't intend it that way, he just bumblefucked his way from one FE mistake into a worse one. But, um, but I had to time him out anyway. Because that's the nature of FE. You know, you gotta manage not just realities, but other people's perceptions of it. Anyway, he came back into the stream like after skipping a day and assumed he was going to be thought of as this horrible monster now by everybody <laughs> because if you're in your polar you don't have a clear grasp of the nuances of it so things tend to be either massive or non-existent <laughs> it's fine that's the point I don't really care I don't, I'm not worried about, like, I'm not worried about 
that kind of respect level stuff that much in actuality. It's like, you can't talk about my girl like that. Well, yeah, I guess technically you can't and I'll time you up for it and shit. But I'm not really worried about either me or my girl, uh, regardless of what you say, you know, so. Alright, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. That's all the time I have today. I hope you enjoyed this fantastic video.